While cricket was first played in South Australia in 1839, reports of cricket being played in Kapunda date back to 1861. This is around the time Kapunda's copper mine was booming, which made it a significant town in colonial South Australia. The newspaper of the time, the Northern Star, mentions casual games on local paddocks and a club in Kapunda being formed called the Light Cricket Club. Few precise details of early matches are available, but the Light Club played Adelaide twice and lost both times very convincingly. These losses must have been too much for them because a meeting held at the Lord Palmerston Hotel in December 1866 announced the formation of the Kapunda Cricket Club as a replacement. It is this occasion, 150 years ago, that we celebrate one of the oldest cricket clubs in South Australia and the many champion local cricketers and characters the Kapunda Cricket Club has produced. Early games for the Kapunda Cricket Club were held on the site of the previous bowling green on Cray Street, later switching to an open area northwest of the town. In 1875, Kapunda moved towards the development of a public recreation ground that was after Francis Dutton and local MP James Pearce promised large donations of money, which was eventually used to purchase a block of land which became Dutton Park. Before the opening of Dutton Park, the cricket club had levelled and planted the oval surface without a water supply. By the time of the opening, the grass had not yet come up enough to enable players to use it, so coconut matting similar to Hessian was used. The Kapunda Club invited the Norwoods, premier club of the Colony, to play a game against the local 18. It was a significant event and dignitaries James Pearce and William Oldham played a ceremonial over before the game began. Although Kapunda used 18 batsmen, their score of 36 was no match for Norwood. At lunch, the official opening took place with the usual toasts and compliments, except for the condition of the ground, which all agreed was exceedingly rough. During the day, at least 2,000 people visited the ground. By 1875, several cricket clubs were active in the town and nearby district, notably Hamilton. Teams rarely scored more than 100 in an innings and in 1877, a player called McLaren topped the season's batting averages with nine and a third. The size of teams was determined by their batting strength. Teams of 22 players were not unusual, even in interstate sides. This was evident when the Australian Test side played a two-day match against a northern team at Dutton Park in 1880. The countryside fielded 22 players, 10 of whom made ducks in a total score of 80. The Australian side made 401. Shops were closed at noon and about 1,000 people were there on both afternoons to watch the match. Australia's captain, Billy Murdoch, complimented the club on the excellence of the pitch, although it was still coconut matting. In the early 1880s, Kapunda had three cricket sides who would regularly play against each other. In 1882, unsuccessful moves were made to form an association with other towns. Eventually, in September 1888, a meeting was held at Nuriupa to form a cricket association called the Barossa Cricketing Association. A week later, another meeting was held and Kapunda moved that the association be called the Barossa and Light Cricket Association. The new association had seven sides consisting of Kapunda, Truro, Tanunda, Nuriutpa, Freeling and Angerston. Kapunda won their first association premiership in its second season in 1890 by winning six of their nine matches that season. Over the following 60 years, Kapunda won nine premierships and would be the second most successful club in the Barossa and Light Association after Angerston. The association would face difficulties over the years with train timetables and teams becoming uncompetitive and pulling out. Also, with both World War I and II, the association closed, then restarted several times. Kapunda had several standout cricketers up to the 1950s, such as opening bowler Ray Giersch and batsman Jack Dermody, Lionel Weckett, John Larwood and Bram Lang, who would often feature with the best performances. Colin Giles was the driving force in encouraging Kapunda's young cricketers when there was no B-grade or Colts in the 1950s. There was also club stalwart Freddie Geyer who worked tirelessly around the club as manager, statistician, scorer and patron for many years. 
Of course, there were plenty of characters who enjoyed a bit of fellowship after the game, such as Bluey Nixon and the legendary J.K. John Keogh. The early 1960s were a successful time for Kapunda, winning three A1 premierships in a row from 1960 to 1962 and a B-grade premiership in 1969. Some of the standout players in the 60s were fast bowlers. David McWaters, Bob Marrett, Nick Bennett and batsman Neville Hailstone, Ron Masters, Dennis Haddo, brothers Stan and Terry Nowak, Jim Haywood and wicketkeeper John Talbot. There was Jack Mosey from Robertstown and his sons John and Warren Mosey who also played at Kapunda since they boarded there while attending Kapunda High School. All three played in the 1960 winning grand final. John and Warren would return to play for Udunda Robertstown with John playing for many years until he was in his 60s. Often occupying the crease and scoring thousands of runs, John became known as the Bush Bradman and a legend of the Barossa and Light Cricket Association. But perhaps the most prominent player of the 1960s was Eddie Renner, who had scored more than 10,000 runs over 21 seasons of playing for the Kapunda Cricket Club. He was a tenacious captain who was the driving force that taught Kapunda's young cricketers, such as Dennis Johnson, Brian Menzel and Terry Ryan, how to win. These values have been the basis of the Kapunda Cricket Club, which continue to this day. Eddie was a fast scoring, attacking batsman who would often hit his first ball to the boundary. When he wasn't batting, he would often sit in his car and would honk his horn if the run rate needed a move on. One of his highlights as a player was in 1960 when he scored 106 not out in the semi-final and then backed it up with a much needed 154 to win the grand final against Angerston. Eddie Top scored the association batting that year with 560 runs and an average of 70. Another highlight was being chosen to play in the South Australian countryside to play the MCC touring team in 1951. Eddie was also active in the Barossa and Light Cricket Association committee for many years and was awarded a life membership. Such was his influence in the local game, the man of the match in today's A1 Grand Final is awarded the Eddie Renner Medal. The 1970s and early 80s were perhaps the most successful period of the Kapunda Cricket Club's history by winning six of eight grand finals, which included four in a row between 1974 and 1977. This successful period was led by another outstanding cricketer, Dennis Johnson, who was A1 captain 16 times in 20 years. Appropriately called Sarge, he was a fierce left-hander who loved the cut shot and scored many runs and took plenty of wickets with his handy off spinners. In this golden era of Kapunda cricket, the club had many great cricketers, like opening batsman Robert Giles, along with the reliable Robert Higgins, Brian Menzel and Terry Ryan in the middle order. There was also the fierce pace of bowlers Paul McCarthy and brothers Jeff, Craig and Phil Jarman, who played in six A-grade cricket premierships, winning man of the match three times. One of the highlights of the 1970s was winning the fourth grand final in a row against Nuriutpa in 1977. With Kapunda defending just 133, Phil Whitey Jarman tore through Nuri's top order. Sarge apparently told Whitey to bowl as fast as he could, which he did by taking seven for 41 in a blistering spell, knocking over Nuri as well as wicketkeeper and brother Robert Kelpie Jarman, who was struck on the head and had to leave the field. Another highlight was the 1980 A1 Grand Final, when Kapunda were underdogs to beat an undefeated Angerston side with returning state players Brian Hearn and Bob Blewett, and they won that match by six wickets. The A2s also won the Grand Final that year comfortably against Freeling. In the early 1970s, Kapunda also dominated the Colts grades. The younger Jarman brothers, David, Robert and Craig, and Russell Nowak were prominent. Each of these boys for a number of years would play Colts in the morning and seniors in the afternoon, often opening the bowling and playing in grand finals for both. The 1980s and 90s saw Kapunda play in six losing A1 grand finals, but a win in 1988 saw the emergence of a couple of young players, Chris Ryan and Paul O'Reilly, who were fierce quicks in their day. 
Although not quite as sharp as they used to be, Froggy and O's still enjoy playing in the lower grades today. There was also Tony Holding, Rodney Brown and Greg Hinderwell putting in good performances during the 1990s. Kapunda's A3s also won a premiership in 1988 and won a couple more in the 1990s. The A4s celebrated by jumping in Beatles pool twice in the 90s by winning premierships in 1995 and 99 and then backed it up in 2001. There was also the good, the bad and the ugly with an A5 premiership in 1989 followed by a fistful of sloggers a few years later. Among the prominent players in these sides were Paul Tolly Schultz and his brother Pete, Greg Fickle Rewadi, Sam Hambor, Paul White, Andrew Haywood and Stefan Arns. The early 1980s also saw success with Kapunda's young under-16 side winning two premierships in a row in 1981 and again in 82. Kapunda had similar success in their under-15s a decade later, winning the Premiership twice in a row, again in 1992 and 93. These junior successes were the foundation of Kapunda's resurgence in senior cricket, and that came in the 2000s. Kapunda were Premiers in 2005 with a match-winning century from Sam Ryan. Joffa Ryman arrived at Kapunda and he captained the side to another Premiership in 2009 with Paul O'Reilly taking home the Eddie Renner medal. Players who have captained and gone on to continue long careers in the A1s are Matt and Sam Ryan and Rob and Mark Johnson. Brett Johnson has been an integral part of the A1s for many years and Danny Menzel, Damian Trotter, Max Van Dissel, Daniel Hornsey, Andrew Adams, Troy Sires, Luke and Matt Hoffman in the other grades. Over the years, Kapunda has had a number of cricketers playing district cricket, such as Rodney Ellis and Craig Jarman. During the 1990s and 2000s, former Kapunda juniors Rob and Mark Johnson and Paul O'Reilly played district cricket, and along with Jason Girth and Craig Ryman, represented the SA Country Outback several times with Rob being captain for a couple of years. Rob has been a very successful cricketer in the Barossa and Light Cricket Association, winning the A1 Cricketer of the Year five times. Mark was also chosen in the state under 19 side. The A3s won another premiership in 2007 and last year in 2016 with Luke Hoffman taking seven wickets. Kim Jarman was Association A3 Cricketer of the Year in 2014. Beatles Pool had another workout when the A5s had a successful run winning four premierships from 2005 to 2011. Chris Ryan has won Association A4 Cricketer of the Year twice and is among some great names on the shield for Kapunda's D Johnson and T Ryan Club Cricketer of the Year. Like 20 years previously, Kapunda had another resurgence in the under-16s, playing four grand finals between 2011 and 2014 and winning three. Emerging young cricketers from those sides, such as Connor White, Tom and Jacob Williams, and Joanne Callum-Brown are exciting young players that are coming through the senior ranks today. Joey Brown is currently Kapunda's A1 captain and recently, played in the SA Country Outback side in the National Country Championships. Another member of the Brown family, Darcy, is another success of the Kapunda Cricket Club, playing for the girls' state country side for a couple of years and playing for the Northern Jets girls' district team. As well as the great players, Kapunda Cricket Club has had plenty of interesting characters over the years also. Fickle, Tolly, Anzo, Sal, Froggy, Charlie Brown, Hornbag, Homer, Max Van Dissel, and of course, current club patron, Whitey. There's also the traditions such as the Schooner School, Spoofy, Pass the Ace, Mock Weddings, going to Tarly Discos in your whites, and of course, jumping into Beatles Pool after a grand final. Cricketing Kapunda has changed a lot over the years. Dutton Park wickets originally used coconut matting, then possibly turf, then replacing it with hard porous pitches on concrete, onto artificial matting years later, then in 2002 back to turf pitches. Maintaining them to a high standard take a lot of work and a group effort which is synonymous to the club. Committee members over the years such as Freddie Geyer, Kim Ryan, Brett Cummins, 
Mark Knott and Troy Sires, along with Mick Woods and many junior coaches and volunteers, ensure the Kapunda Cricket Club prospers for future players in the years to come. The club appreciate Dutton Park and groundsman Terry Ryan for assisting with fantastic facilities, which are also possible thanks to the support of many sponsors over the years. Special thanks must also go to JT Johnson & Sons and Arns Engineering for providing people with a fantastic place and club to play cricket.